ready to export this, but we just did a whole lot of work on this armor. And before we export and risk uh, the 3DS Max crashing and losing all of our information, we're going to save this 3DS uh, Max file. So what you could do is go to the 3DS symbol, click Start, click Save, and go ahead and just call this Nidacy uh, Tutorial Top. Half, or whatever you want to save it as and click save this is just a precautionary measure you know it's always good to save and save often so if 3ds decides to crash or your power goes out you don't have to start all over from scratch all right let's go ahead and export it uh, so we're going to go to the 3ds symbol click start click export uh, find our UMP customs folder UMP custom armors, click this, and in this first window, instead of saving it directly to Daedric, what we're going to do, because we still need to create other parts of the armor, is we're going to right click, and we're going to create a new folder, and we're going to call this uh, Backup. All right. Then you're going to go into the Backup folder, and you're going to, uh, you're not going to do anything. You're going to go down here to Save As Type, you're going to drop this down, you're going to select NIF and you're gonna name it something familiar to what it is it's a sort of a bikini top just type the name in and uh, click save I'm gonna call mine bikini top I set it to a NIF file and I'm gonna click save I'm gonna save it now all your settings should be identical to the settings you see on my screen and as soon as they are you wanna delete the weld vertices you don't wanna weld the vertices and you're gonna click export give it a minute as soon as it's done now we're ready we're gonna go ahead and start texturing it and you're like well I don't have Adobe Photoshop well that's okay you're using uh, Autodesk 3ds Max if you have version 2011 or later uh, you have this nifty little paint shop right here in 3ds Max so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to deselect all uh, actually I want you to select uh, the top I want you to right click on it and select hide unselected. Now that hid everything but your top. Now what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in on it. In fact, just uh, on your keyboard, hit Alt W. So now we're just in the perspective. Now I want you to go up to Tools, in the upper left hand corner, drop down your Tools menu, and I want you to click Viewport Canvas. Now this little window is going to pop up. I just want you to just select up here on top of it and drag it over. It's going to be a little slow. As soon as you get it where you want it, that's good. Uh, release it and set it off to the side. All right. Now, first thing you want to do is you want to select paint by left clicking on it. It's going to say uh, the object needs a material. So we want to put a material on it. Let's assign a standard material. So go ahead and select assign a standard, standard material. Now it's saying what kind of color do you want to create? Well, we want to select diffuse color so click on diffuse color now it's wanting to know uh, what the dimensions of it are alright this is the different sizes of what kind of textures you can 1024 is regular it's kind of a mid-range 512 would be like a crappy texture 1024 is mid-range 2048 by 2048 is high def I'm gonna make mine high def if you don't want to, to make your texture file all you know HD just select 1024 doesn't matter it's up to you this is up to you the creator I'm making mine high def so I'm selecting 1024 uh, the background color is right here what kind of background color do I want to have well I usually like uh, mine to have a background color relative to the color that I'm going to be making the item uh, I'm thinking about making it like a, a dark color you know something like a dark red so I would so click left click in the color this window pops up. I'm going to make mine like a dark red. So I'm going to drag, you know, you can just click in here and kind of gives you a uh, color uh, choices, you know, and this is the actual color right here that you're going to be working with. I'm going to select my background to be kind of like a dark red. And that doesn't look red, it looks more like pink. So this little sucker here, this little arrow, you're going to drag us all the way up. Now it's more like a really dark red, almost brown. Maybe drag it up just a tad bit. It's important to remember that the texture you create 
is darker than what you actually want it to appear in game. The Skyrim engine makes brightens colors quite a bit when they're in game. So you always want to work with a darker color than what you want. Like let's say I want bright red, well I, you know, kind of go like right here. And that will make the color a really bright red. So I don't want it to be that bright. So I'm going to go kind of a darker red right here. And I'm going to select OK. Now it's saying save the new texture to. Well, where do you want to save it to? These three little dots over here, you're going to left click on that. You're going to drop down your window here. And we're going to be saving into our UMP custom armors folder. We'll move it later. So now we're going to right click in here. We're going to select a new. We're going to select folder. And we're going to call this one textures. All right. Now you're going to enter this. And you're going to give it a name. Well, I'm going to call this the bikini top. No spaces, no special characters, just bikini top. And uh, you can also do underscore D for diffuse. All right. So bikini top underscore D for di diffuse. Now it's saying save as type. Well, we're going to save it as a DDS. So you're going to hit this save as type, scroll down to you get DDS image file, and select that. Now it's going to automatically save this texture as a DDS. I'm going to click Save. Now a new window is going to pop up saying, well, how do you want to configure the DDS? Uh, for, the, for this basic texturing tutorial, we're not going to work with alphas. Uh, we're going to work in that in some advanced tutorials. Uh, alphas have some complications. There's things you need to understand about alpha properties and what they do in a diffuse map and what they do in a normal map and what they do in a specular map. They do a different thing in each map in the Skyrim engine. It reads that alpha property differently. So we don't want an alpha. So what we're going to do is I want you to click on R8, green 8, blue 8. That's red 8-bit, green 8-bit, and blue 8-bit. Select that right there and go ahead and click OK. You don't have to worry about generate mitmaps. They're not important for this tutorial. Just click OK. Now we're good here. We're going to select create the texture. So go ahead and go OK. Now you get this new window pops up. It's called your layers. If anybody's familiar with Adobe Photoshop or GIMP, that's what this is. It's just the layers of the texture. Very important. Never paint directly onto the background. All right. So the very first thing you do when creating a texture is you go down here to add new layer and you select that. Always paint on new layers. All right, never paint on the background, paint on the new layer. All right, the new layer will overlay the background. So it will not change the background. Now I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to start playing around and retexturing. The movement in this window is identical except if you click on your mesh you'll color on it. So you don't want to actually click on the mesh. Uh, you just kind of want to use your middle mouse button to move around like this, your middle mouse wheel and the block to move it around. Don't try to use any other mouse clicks to move. All right. Uh, first thing I do is want to paint some, maybe some wrinkles in the front to kind of give it some, you know, an illusion that there's this kind of line going out. And I'll show you some of the really cool tools here in the viewport canvas. First thing I'll work with is paint. I'm going to use a, um, I'm going to change the color to be kind of the same as this. So I'm going to use this sample screen color. I'm going to click this little eyedropper tool and I'm going to select my armor and it's going to give me my background color and then I'm going to drop the color down, the brightness down just a bit so it's darker than the original color. Then I'm going to select OK. Alright, I don't really need to change. Let me see what this looks like. Yeah, that's too big. I want to make that smaller. So I go to my radius. I'm going to drop this down to 20. And notice the circle that I paint with is getting smaller. Now I'm going to kind of use my imagination and think how would wrinkles look on this part of the clothing. Well, they would kind of go up, you know, near the top and then be a little smaller. And they kind of go like that and be bigger. It doesn't have to look fancy. It can look kind of like mine does, like crap for right now. We're going to fix that. Kind of do the same thing on the other side, you know, make these like little wrinkles here. All right. Now I'm going to select my blur tool and I'm going to blur them up. Now watch what happens when I start blurring it. It's going to start... Oh, I forgot to rotate the UV map. Don't worry about that. It's just got to live with it. Now this takes a while, blurring in these wrinkles. That side's not look that great. So, you know, whatever. 
just kind of blur in these wrinkles it takes a while they're gonna be smaller I should have made these lines smaller actually um, that's okay I don't like the way that those wrinkles turned out so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to right click on this layer show you what you can do and you can delete your layer not happy with the changes I just get rid of them all right add a new layer because they never want to paint on the background I decrease my radius a bit more make it more like a 10 all right uh, oops I still have blur selected select paint again and now I wanna try that again all right And I'm going to select the blur tool, kind of blur these up a bit. Maybe increase the radius of my blur tool to a 20. This is all about you just playing around, you know, and blurring in the wrinkles to where they look pretty good. You know, doesn't look like much now, but give it a minute. It'll start to look nice. You just hold down your left click and you kind of just, you know, move over it like crazy. <laughs> And you know, it's starting to form, it's starting to look kind of nice, you know, it look like these little wrinkles in there. Now because I forgot to move something in the UV map, I'm going to get this line here. Uh, we'll cover that in a later tutorial, why that line occurs and what it is and how to avoid that uh, in a later tutorial. But for now, don't worry about it. I'll make something to mask that. Alrighty, so I just blend these wrinkles in, kind of make them look nice as best I can. Another good uh, way to make the wrinkles even look more realistic. See, this side looks really good. This side's got that line there. Nothing I can do about that right now. Uh, that looks pretty good. I'd have to go back and re-save it and re-export it. That looks pretty decent. I'll take this side back a little bit. All I'm doing is just blurring it, you know, to make it look kind of nice. And uh, there's some wrinkles there, you know, a couple. Uh, but another thing we can do is we can go into our mask tool, click our masks, and I'm going to use a spray paint now when I when I mess around in here. I'm going to go ahead and paint some more wrinkles on. Yeah, just to kind of get some better looking wrinkles in, in here. And see now it's spray painting in there. And then I just collect the blur tool and see now it blurs a little bit better. Should have done that from the get-go. My wrinkles would look better than they do right now. All right, now I just created the illusion that there's wrinkles in this shirt or this bikini top. And this is all about your imagination. You are painting, so it's your canvas. So you got to think and just kind of use your imagination here to decide, okay, what would this look like, you know? This would kind of go back a little bit. I'm just using my imagination. I use my blur tool and blur makes it okay. Makes it look better. That's good to, when you're doing wrinkles to hit the edge more than you hit the rest of the wrinkle. So wherever the edges are on, on the wrinkle for your clothing, you want to select that more. Uh, select this right here some and then kind of blur that in. All I'm doing is just painting my armor, you know, I'm making it look cool. And I'm going to hit this edge more. There's so many tools in this painting. Just about anything you can find in Photoshop, you're gonna find in this uh, in this Adobe shop right here. And this is gonna take you a long time. I mean, you're gonna be tweaking with these. It's all about how you want your armor to look. All right. And we're out of time for this video here, so just go ahead and continue on to the next video, and we'll start texturing our armor a little bit more.